Hey guys, Train Freak here, and today I'm working on these tortoise switches because I need three more installed on my layout so that way I can do basic yard switching, at least on one side. I still need quite a few more. So, before we get to it, I always want to remind all my viewers to... And make sure you fill in the bell so that way you receive future notifications. Including things such as my how-tos, which I'm doing now. My weekly layout updates, which I'm trying to get one ready for you tomorrow. And even some of my contests, which I have the 400 subscriber contest going on right now. And once I hold 400 for a whole week, we will award that prize out. And we got prizes in. N, H, O, and O. So, let's get to the tortoise switches. You can see I got three here in front of me, um, which is actually going to finish off my first uh, NCE Switch 8 uh, Mark II card, which I have another one here just to kind of show you. NCE Switch 8 Mark II. And the way these works is on the card here you plug in your track this goes to your track bus you have the optional to use dc power instead of using power off your track uh, if you choose to go this route you still got to have the track power connected in there so that way it can still send the communication this toggle switch here is just which power are you using um, and then these down here this is uh, what you connect to a tortoise switch, or if you have a crossover, you can have two tortoise switches together wired into the same uh, input and output. So, and you can do up to eight with this card, which we will get to that later. So I'm going to go ahead and move that one off to the side. Um, and then, of course, we'll get into JMRI at the end, which I have my laptop up here as well. But the first thing that we need to do is we need to solder some type of wire feeds. Now, you could choose to try to do this under the layout if you really wanted to and risk burning yourself. Um, I've done it many times. The easiest way to do it is to go ahead and get like a, a short cable, you know, about a foot long, maybe a foot and a half at the most. And I like to use communication wire. And, I mean, it's... The wires, uh, it comes in a pair that it's twisted. This could be the same as network cable or telephone wire, but this is just, uh, if you Google it, we call this a jumper wire, and it's great for um, 66 and 110 blocks. So, um, we're going to use this to solder our wires on there. Of course, you need a hot soldering iron. Solder and flux and I use the Alpha OM uh, see if I can get that in the camera there Alpha uh, OM338 and you have to keep this stuff refrigerated and then the other thing I use and I will tell you if you buy Talenti ice cream they make good storage containers um, and their ice cream is really good but I use these things uh, we call these things URs um, they've got silicone on the inside, and you can literally, you know, if you're doing a crossover, um, I'm going to see if I can get this in, but you can run three individual wires in there, and then, of course, the red, you use, like, channel locks or pliers, crimp it down, and there's silicone inside that will actually ooze out the end, and it makes these uh, water resistant or moisture resistant so it's really really good to have especially if you have a garage layout like mine or a shed layout that might not be climate controlled all right so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to grab some wire oh good electrical scissors all right so i just only cut it about yay long i just need it long enough and then what I'm going to do is strip the ends. Alright. So that way we got some 
bare wire showing. And so the way I do this is I will point this towards me, this side. This is where the actuator is on the, the motor. And as long as that side is to me, I will take my yellow and blue and I will put my yellow on the left side and my blue on the right. Before I do that, I need to get a little bit of flux. And let's see here. Sometimes I will try to use toothpicks. And I'm not seeing any toothpicks on me, which that's okay. So I'm just going to put a little dab on top of the holes. Where my solder joints are going to be. Now if you're asking which ones am I doing on these tortoise switches, I'm just doing the first hole and the last hole. I don't necessarily have to connect anything else to it unless I was doing like some type of electro frog or manual signals, but since I'm using JMRI, I don't really need that. I just need to wire these two. So I'm going to take my wire and I'm going to poke it up through the top and I'm going to bend it down. Do the same thing with this one. And I'm sorry that my hands are in the way, but I will show you once I get it out. There we go. And bend it down. And it's okay if your wire comes past, because once you get it soldered on, you can always take your scissors and snip them out. So the next thing I'm going to do is get some solder on this soldering iron. if we can't get that soldered in. There we go. Ooh. And voila, we have a good solder connection. All right. And then like I said, um, we can take our electrical scissors and snip that wire on the end. And then that is a professionally soldered connection. Then what I'll do is go ahead and mount this up to the uh, underpinning of the layout, which I will show you here shortly. And then when we get ready to run wires from this end here to the switch eight, this here, that is when I'll use these little connectors. So I'm not gonna bore you um, and do these other two. So I'm going to go ahead and do it off camera. And I will be back here shortly. Okay, so you can see now I've got all three of these wired up and soldered. And now we're going to take this little packet that comes with a rod, a screw, and this little plastic piece, which I'm going to show you what that's about here shortly. And we are going to put this in here so that way we can have this finished and ready to be mounted up under the layout. So first thing I'm going to do is take my scissors and I am going to cut the package so that way I can get the plastic piece out and the screw and let's see if we can get the rod out. Alright and there's our rod. So the tools for this section here you're going to want is some good small pliers. You can use needle nose, these are just regular pliers, and a good Phillips screwdriver. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to take the end of this and I'm just going to make it literally the width of these pliers and I'm going to bend a 90 degree uh, bend in it. Okay. Then I'm going to come about one third of the way and make another small bend. Not much. So that way it looks, let's see if I can get this in camera, like that. Okay. Then the next thing I'm going to do is take this little plastic piece and we're going to pop it inside those two grooves 
and slide it up about halfway. You can adjust this once it gets under or mounted under the layout. We'll go ahead and poke our rod through the middle hole. And then on this black piece, there's two holes. There's a very little hole and then the bigger hole. The little hole is what the rod is going to poke in, like so. And I can already tell you, I got my bend just a little too far. So I need to readjust that. And sometimes that happens. We all make mistakes. Or as Bob Ross says, happy little accidents. Happy little accidents we can always go back and fix. But I think I had too much bend in it. There we go. Yep, I brought the bend back out a little bit. So now we have it in. And then now we're going to take our screw, poke it in that hole, and screw the screw in. And I think I've got the wrong Phillips screwdriver. And I do. Let me go get the right one. Alright, so now i got the right screwdriver. So now I'm just going to go in there and screw this screw all the way in. Because what it will do is prevent that rod from coming out okay and then like i said we can adjust this once it gets up under the layout so that's one so i'm not going to go ahead and do the other two on camera so i will come back and show you how we're going to mount this up there okay so now we've got all three with the rods connected and there is the bend that I was telling you about. So that's how it should look. And then the key about this little piece here that you can, you know, move up and down is that is your center pivot. So, and that's what helps put tension on your throw bar on your turnout. So that way when it's thrown one way or the other, open or closed, uh, that will help prevent the trains from derailing at the throat of the switch. Now the fun part. We get to go and mount these under the layout. So let's go visit the layout. Okay, so I thought I would start off here and show you that if you look right in the center of the throw bar, there is a little hole. And this is what I was telling you about as far as like tension. Because this one has a tortoise switch on it. it. I mean, it just creates perfect tension. And looking at it on an aerial view, you can see that this is what I would call a crossover. This piece of track here. So I actually have this turnout and this turnout wired together in the same uh, spot on the switch 8. This is a diverging track, and so this one is separately, and you can see that, see, even if I press it over here, as soon as I let go, it's going to snap back, and same if I pull. So, just, you know, that's, that's the whole purpose of these tortoise switches, is they help prevent derails at the at the throat because if if your turnout's like this and it's barely off well guess what uh half of your wheel is going to want to go straight and then the other side of the wheel is going to want to hit the curve and eventually one of them's going to lose and then you'll have a derail every time and with the locomotive that's not good because that will cause shorts now i don't know if you're going to be able to see this or not so i'm gonna get real close but you can see that i have drill a hole under these throw bars and you want a fairly good size hole i know circuitron which is the manufacturer of the tortoise switches recommend one size which i don't really pay attention to the size they want um i put in like i think it's a quarter inch drill bits what i use um i've got a drill bit set and it's the biggest drill bit i use i think it's a quarter inch and so that's what i use under mine and that just gives plenty of room to work with now, the ones that I'm going to be working on today is this one right here. 
this is the only one on this side of the yard that does not have a turnout. But the hole is already there. I've already drilled the hole for it because that's one thing you got to do before you install your tortoise switches. You got to have a good uh, hole to work with. This one already has a tortoise switch and you could probably see the throw rod uh, barely sticking up above. And that's okay. All right. So we're gonna work on this one, which is for tracks four and five. And then the other two that I'm gonna to wanna to do are over here and it's these two. All right. And eventually I'll have to do that end of the yard later i can't remember if this one so this one don't have one i know there's a few down there that do which i'll have to wire up to a separate switch eight which we will get to later if you're using pico turnouts like these you got to go ahead and take your springs out because the tortoises will not uh throw the the uh the springs they're just not strong enough and way down there you could probably barely see it um but there is a double slip down there that I had to do the same thing and I want to say I already got the uh, tortoises on those so there's quite a few down there that I've already got tortoises on so and theoretically the way this is supposed to work that little hole back there goes from goes to the helix so when the train comes in it's either going to take the siding which is the second track from the braces and it's going to go around the yard and then come in on the other side or the the train will come in and go through that double slip so this is a double open-ended yard um but basically you have the main line which is the the, the uh, track to your right then the siding four yard tracks the first track will be the arrival the other three tracks are departures for different locations the fifth track is nothing but a run around. It also connects to the caboose track, which you can see the cabooses. And then uh, in the three way on the middle, uh, you got a Y. That Y goes to the right is for the sanding or the sand and diesel and water um, unloading cars. The uh, two tracks to the left of that is in and incoming and outgoing from the turntable. And then, of course, you can see the uh, machine shop and some of its stuff as well. And then that little number four switch, which goes to that switcher, goes over to the car shops, which you can see I have a passenger car in there right now. Because, um, I can't remember, no, it's not this one. The other one, I dropped it and the couplers broke. Which is okay, because I got new couplers for them all anyways. So, but... Everything on this side of the yard except for that one turnout is all wired up, okay? And it's wired up down here, so let's see how dark it is. Hopefully not too dark. That card right there is the Switch 8. So you can see that I've got a few wires already connected to it, but i still got a few wires that can connect to it. And when I was telling you about the UR connectors... There you go. That's those. So, um, that's the easiest way, in my opinion, of doing it. So, now, now we got to get up under there and mount this thing. So, let me go grab all the tools I need, and I will show you what I need. Alrighty, I'm under the layout, and I've got my lovely wife, who's going to be my eyes from above. Um, it's so much easier if you have a second person and I apologize that this is very echoey and loud and that's because I'm in a enclosed container for the most part but this is a half inch I think I told you quarter earlier it's actually half inch that's a half inch hole that I drilled from the top and I shot backed all the wood chips and the uh, cork pieces before uh, installing the turnout on top of the hole all right um i'm gonna move over to this side you can see we have a tortoise already mounted and it's in one of the positions but this is kind of how it works so now the tracks moved to one position and we're just going to go ahead and move it back and i told you about the little sliding piece it's right up here or right up there 
We have to use screws to mount this sucker in. So like I said, if you got eyes from above, it makes things a whole lot easier. And then there's the UR connectors that have this connected. So what do we need? Well, let's sh let me show you. First thing, we're going to need a tortoise, and you're going to want the, the uh, rod in the dead middle, because that's going to help you find your center, a pin, because when you get, you have to use pressure to hold this up there, and you use the pin to mark the spots where your screws are going to go. Speaking of screws, I'm using number six, half inch, and before I put the screws in, I've got a drill with a 1 16th drill bit that I'm just barely going to drill inwards. That's going to help my screws go in easier. Of course, you need a screwdriver. And then after we get it mounted, we will use these UR connectors and channel locks, which I like these Craftsman Robo Grips. These things are pretty awesome. So, all right. So, like I said, and I'm going to try to do this. So, if the camera gets wonky, I apologize, because this is not easy. So, I am going to try to poke the rod up in the little hole, which I don't think I did. Alright, I'm in it now. In it to win it. And just, so that way you can see, I'm just moving the tortoise side to side, and you can see the rod being thrown. So what my eyes from above is going to do is tell me when I'm in the dead middle. So I'm just gently going to slide it. Am I in the middle? Come back toward me just a hair. Alright, right there. Go back toward the wall. Go back towards the wall, she says. It's just got to, the uh, two uh, middle rails do not need to touch any of the two outers. Go over to the wall just a little bit more. Okay. Just a little. Okay. Okay. Alright, so she says I'm dead middle. And you can see I'm having to hold this up here the whole time, which is, it will wear your arm out. Alright, now what I'm going to do is take my throw bar and I'm going to push it all the way over. And did that track push all the way to the wall, Amanda? Yes. She says it did. Now while I'm holding this in place, I'm going to take my finger. Oops. And you got to try your best not to move the tortoise. That's what makes it hard. It's all the way to me. And now she says it's all the way to her. So this is perfect. Okay? So now what I'm going to do is hand the phone to her so that way she can show you what it looks like from above. Did it move all the way? Yes. I'm going to go back. Alright y'all, so Amanda's going to hold the phone while I do this part. Alright, so now i got my wire. I've got the other wire here. And what we're going to do is use these things. Oops, I just dropped the one, but I've got plenty. Um, and we're going to wire these up together. So I'm going to go ahead and wire the yellow one first. And I've already ran my feed wire that goes over to the switch 8. I felt like there was really no point of y'all watching me do that. Now, on these URs, and Amanda, you might want to need to zoom in. You're going to want to make sure that your wire goes all the way down. Because if it does not, then um, you're not going to have a good connection. Alright, so my wires have gone all the way down. I'm going to take my grips and I am going to smash the red thing in. And it should look nice and flat. And if you get a little bit of silicone on your finger, hey, you did something right. Alright, that is one. I'm telling you, these uh, Talenti ice cream jars... Um, are great as uh, containers for your parts and stuff. Alright, now I'm going to do the same thing with the blue wire. 
make sure I'm all the way in. I am. We are going to crimp that as well. And that crimped. I got silicone on my finger. And then what I like to do to kind of help keep my wires tight is I'll twist these around together like so. And then what I'm going to do is so that way I don't have a lot of slack is I'm going to try to feed this backwards. And pull all my slack back on the other end because it's still connected to the spool. So... And I'll show you kind of how, how I got my wiring done in here. All right. So the whole thing about under here is make sure your wiring is all neat and organized. So that way, as you're troubleshooting things, you can easily follow what you're trying to do. So, sorry if I'm making you dizzy. All right. I'm going to meet you over at the Switch 8. Okay, so I actually ended up having some issues with the old turnout, which is right here. Um, this one's been painted on, and the uh, thing is it's, it's sticking. And you can see where it was painted. And so i got to see if I can't try to clean that up, and I might try to use it elsewhere. But... I did grab one elsewhere, and I mean, this thing just moves very smoothly. Uh, let's see here. I mean, you can tell right there. So, got that in place. But, let's see if you can see it. There's a wire that sticks way up. So, what we can do is use some of these clippers and get in there. And pop it out and then that way our thing is just barely coming above and it would not obtrude with the um, with the cars or locomotives that are going over it so all right now let's go over to the switch eight okay so I went ahead and pulled the slack back I've got a reel down here that I like to hang my wire on and so now what we need to do is connect it over here to the switch 8 and what I'm going to do is just kind of pull make sure I got enough cable length like so I'm going to take it use my electrical scissors and cut my wire now I've got a I use these little low voltage nailing things um, I don't know exactly what they're called um, but I'll provide the link for them in the description and I like to use them to help keep my wire neat and tidy another example they look like this here it's uh, just something you nail on there and it holds your cable in place alright so now what I'm going to do is gently strip the ends I don't need too much copper showing because these are going to stick in the uh, joint sections of the card and we definitely do not want those being able to short out all right so we're on number six so the first connection is going to go in that one right there got to use a really really small flathead screwdriver and See if I can get my blade in there. There it goes. And we're going to tighten that wire down. Like so. I'll take my next one. Move right beside. Push it all the way up in there. We're going to tighten that up and then voila, tuck our cables up and we have now connected that tortoise switch to the switch 8. So let me get up and 
uh, we'll demonstrate how it works. Alright y'all, so this should be it. Let's see if it works, because uh, it's definitely in the open position, so I'm going to go to select accessory. We're at number 6, which is what I want to use. And let's hit 1. And you see it move. And if you don't know which one it is, it's this one right here, right beside the car shops. Let's go back, select accessory. We're going to be number 6. Let me get it out of the way, and we'll hit one for straight. Whoops. Oh, we already hit one, duh. Let's, let's go to two this time. And there you go. So we now have a working turnout, and then what I'll end up doing in JMRI is assigning this one on panel pro as turnout number six and we'll be good to go so uh like i said if you haven't subscribed subscribe uh fill in the bell that'll make you receive future notifications and i know we got some angry sheep in the area um and then you know thumbs up that helps with youtube's algorithm so yes thumbs up helps get my video out there and then uh, feel free to comment. So this is how I do tortoise switch machine installs. Now, since I want to let you go, I got two more to do. So y'all be safe out there. I hope you have a great weekend and happy railroading.